Millions of people use ChatGPT, but almost nobody knows the man who created it. Progress in AI is a game of faith. The more faith you have, the more progress you can make. His name is Ilya Sutskever, and he's the chief scientist at OpenAI. Ilya joining was the linchpin for right. uh, OpenAI being healthy successful. If Ilya is that important, why isn't he more famous? How is the man who will most likely create AGI basically unknown? My name is David Andre, and this is the fascinating story of Ilya Sutskever. You have to believe. You have to believe in the idea and to push on it. And the more you believe, the harder you can push. Ilya was born in the Soviet Union somewhere around 1985 or 1986. His exact birthday is not known. When he was five years old, his family moved to Israel. As a child, I would like, you know, look my hand and I would be like, how can it be that this is my hand? Ilya taught himself how to code when he was just seven, an early sign of his genius. I definitely was interested in AI from a fairly early age. When he turned 16, his family decided to move again. And so when my family moved to Canada, I remember the first thing I did was to go to the Toronto Public Library and try to find a book on machine learning. From that point, Ilya was hooked. All he could think about was AI. And so he decided that his main goal in life is to build AGI. If you're new to the channel, my name is David Andre and I make AI videos like this one. So if you want to see more, please subscribe. Ilya attended the University of Toronto, where he got his bachelor's, master's and PhD. But none of those degrees would impact his life as much as his next decision. See, this university had something that no other school could offer, a certain professor. Jeffrey Hinton is one of the greatest pioneers in the history of AI. However, back then, most people saw AI as a total joke, but not Ilya. He desperately wanted to join Hinton's deep learning lab. He knocked on his door every day, hoping to be accepted. When Hinton asked him to make an appointment, Ilya instantly replied, how about now? It didn't take long before Hinton realized that Ilya was special. He had an ability to discover things that took others years to find. Seeing the talent he was dealing with, Hinton accepted Ilya into his lab. But the timing couldn't be worse. The field was going through an AI winter, a period where the interest in AI was at an all-time low. To add fuel to the fire, the AI community didn't really like Jeff Hinton. He kept pushing the idea of neural networks, but back then they were completely useless. Everyone doubted Jeff and Ilya, which only made them more determined. Years went by with little to no progress. Computers simply weren't good enough at the time, but Jeff Hinton and his team kept on pushing. He knew that deep learning would eventually work. And in 2012, there came an opportunity to prove it, the ImageNet competition. This was a challenge to see who could make the best image image recognition algorithm. Teams of researchers from all around the world competed for the number one spot. Luckily, Jeff and Ilya had an ace up their sleeve. Together with Alex Krzyzewski, they created AlexNet, which shocked the world. Thanks to their idea to use deep neural networks and to train them on GPUs, Ilya and the AlexNet team humiliated all competition. But more importantly, this single event showed everyone the immense potential of deep learning. This was the start of the deep learning revolution and Ilya was at the center of it. I just don't want to bet against deep learning. I want to make the biggest uh -huh. possible bet on deep learning. After the ImageNet competition, Ilya joined Jeff Hinton's new research company, DNN Research. However, just four months later, in March of 2013, Google acquired the startup for an undisclosed amount. And of course, Google made sure to hire Ilya as a research scientist. While Ilya was at Google Brain, he worked on a bunch of interesting projects. He is one of the co-authors of the famous AlphaGo paper among people like Demis Hassabis and David Silver. He also worked at TensorFlow, making it easier to use for researchers. But Ilya's biggest contribution was the invention of the sequence-to-sequence -sequence learning algorithm. In fact, Ilya's new algorithm would eventually lead to the creation of the transformer, which Ilya would use to change the world. But more on that later. Google was on top of the AI world, and Ilya was one of its most valued researchers. But one day, he received a strange email. Then, actually one day, I received received e a cold email from Sam saying, hey, let's, let's hang out with some cool people. Little did Ilya know that this invitation to hang out would completely change his life. So we were having a dinner uh, to discuss AI and the future and kind of just what might be possible and whether we could do something positive to affect it. Um, and so my co-founders at OpenAI, so that's Elon, Sam, Ilya, uh, and, and other people were all there. This legendary dinner was where the original OpenAI vision first took shape. Everyone was excited and hopeful, including Ilya. However, there was a problem. Ilya was still working at Google 
with Demis Osabis. Uh, Ilya went back and forth several times. He would say he's going to join Open AI, then Demis would convince him not to, then I would convince him to do so, and then this went back and forth several times, and ultimately he decided to join Open AI. If Ilya Satskever refused to join, if he stayed at Google, then Open AI and ChatGPT would not exist today. Luckily for us, Ilya did end up joining as the research director. The early days of Open AI were rough. The company was a non-profit, so finding investors was a nightmare. It turns out that people don't like investing into something knowing that they will never see that money ever again. Fortunately, Elon decided to commit $1 billion to the project. This allowed the team at OpenAI to hire some of the best people in the field. And with the influx of new talent came some amazing breakthroughs. In 2016, they released OpenAI Gym. In 2017, they released RoboSumo and Universe. In 2018, OpenAI shocked the world with a team of Dota 2 bots that could play the game better than even professional players. These projects made OpenAI more and more famous. However, they also had a cost. The company was spending millions of dollars a month on cloud computing. What's worse, OpenAI was renting computing power from Google, their biggest competitor. Elon was starting to believe that OpenAI had fallen behind other players like DeepMind. He proposed the board of directors with an idea. Get rid of Sam Altman and make him the CEO of the company. However, the board rejected this idea. And so Elon Musk packed his bag and left OpenAI. Just like that, the startup lost its biggest investor. This created a massive problem. OpenAI was still a non-profit and it was spending millions of dollars to train its AI models. If they didn't find new investors fast, they would go bankrupt. Sam Altman tried to use his connections in the venture capital world to get people to invest into OpenAI, but every single person turned him down. The company needed way too much money for a non-profit. Sam, Ilya and Greg had to think quick. They needed to come up with a solution. Otherwise, all of their progress and hard work would go to waste. If OpenAI went under, Google would become the winner of the AI race. If only there was a company that wanted Google to fail. Sam Altman decided to give Microsoft a call. Luckily, the CEO of Microsoft agreed to meet with him. Everything depended on this meeting. If Sam couldn't convince Satya Nadella to invest, it would be the end of OpenAI. Sam Altman flew to Seattle and pulled off a miracle. Today we are very excited to announce a strategic partnership with OpenAI. Microsoft agreed to invest $1 billion. But not only that, Microsoft also gave OpenAI access to Azure, their cloud computing platform. That way, OpenAI didn't have to pay Google anymore. And Microsoft has been a very, very good partner for us. Microsoft provided OpenAI with a plethora of resources, which they immediately put to good use. In 2018, Ilya and other AI researchers at OpenAI created the original GPT model, also known as GPT-1. This was the first major use of the new transformer architecture. A year later, in 2019, OpenAI made waves in the AI community by releasing GPT-2. This new model showed the incredible potential of large language models, but it also achieved another purpose, a purpose that was close to Ilya's heart. GPT-2 managed to impress Jeffrey Hinton himself. GPT-2, which was one of the earlier language models, amazed me. However, all of this success had a price. By partnering with Microsoft, OpenAI stopped being a non-profit entity. This didn't sit well with the AI community. To make matters worse, the company was releasing less and less of their work open source. The final blow came in 2020 with the release of GPT-3. This marked the turning point when OpenAI stopped being open AI. But Ilya himself said that the move to closed source was about competition, not safety. All controversy aside, GPT-3 was pretty good. Scratch that, it was really good. However, it didn't really garner that much attention. Sure, everyone within the AI community knew about it, but the impact on the general public wasn't that great until Sam Altman got an idea. What if OpenAI gave GPT-3 a nice user-friendly interface? Maybe it just needed a clean UI that the average person could use. But the other OpenAI founders weren't so excited. They wanted to keep working on better and better models. Why bother spending time and resources on some user interface? However, Sam persisted. He believed in his idea so much that he ended up convincing Ilya and Greg. So they took the GPT-3 model, improved it a bit with a process called RLHF and called the new model GPT-3.5. They decided to go with the simplest user interface possible, chat. Now they just needed a name. The most obvious choice was connecting the name of the UI with the name of the language model and so chat GPT 
was born. We all know what happened next. Sam Altman's intuition turned out to be right, and overnight the world was changed. One million users in five days. The fastest growing product in history. Everyone was shocked by the success of ChatGPT, including the man who built it, Ilya Satskev. The thing which has given me, me personally, an endless amount of joy is when my parents told me that their friends use ChatGPT in their daily lives. But Ilya's impact on the world goes far beyond ChatGPT. In 2015, MIT named him one of the 35 most important innovators in the world. Time magazine put him as one of the most influential people in AI. In total, Ilya has been cited over 427,000 times, making him one of the most cited computer scientists in history. For the last 11 years, he has been at the forefront of the AI revolution. And I would bet that 50 years from now, once AI really changes the world, Ilya will be remembered as one of the most important scientists of all time, up there with people like Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein and Alan Turing. I tried really hard, I gave it everything you got and that worked so far.